Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson. Today, uh, we mentioned previously, and you might have been seeing if you've been hanging out on Twitch, uh, that we've been not only hanging out on Twitch, we've been playing Twitch. We've got ourselves, finally found our comfort champion for the patch, uh, for the AD carry role. We wanted to get ourselves into a little AD, brush up our skills, get some lessons coming in so we can learn that role a little bit more effectively for ourselves, improve our own game. That's exactly what we're going to do here today. We're going to hop in to this Twitch game here. Now, this was a Twitch game in which the main thing I remember is a final team fight where uh, the team fight was breaking out around blue as I was pushing out the bottom lane right by where the waves crash initially. And I decided to leave the minions and rotate over to the team fight. I got there just in the nick of time to make a difference and really get a good spray and pray off. Um, a rat -tat, tat as it's called these days. And that is something we've been struggling with a lot in our past reviews is map awareness and when to rotate to the team according to seeing things break out on the mini-map. I think that was a good moment of improvement, but I want to see what else we could have done in that vein. So I'm going to be looking for those sort of rotational plays. I know we did wind up making a good one at the end. Let's see if there are opportunities to make good ones along the way as well. That we didn't want to find those opportunities to improve and I have been noticing that even though I am somebody who starts out with uh, a Doran's Blade and am a physical damage champion I do have some struggles last hitting so I think going forward we might actually drill last hits on Twitch which feels kind of like cheating but I want to get good at last hitting on Twitch because he is somebody uh, who feels like he's my comfort champion for bot and we are a primary on bottom, so. Do expect to be getting that roll fairly often, especially because of the whole ADC 2017 thing. I'm not sure if people still feel that way about the roll, <laughs> but nonetheless, we're happy to take that on our shoulders and see what we can do with it. We just struggle a little bit in early and mid game. I feel like once we hit the late game, we really hit our stride. Um, but that's, I think, just how the champion works a little bit. Very centered around his ultimate. So early game, when you don't have that six, a little painful. Um, we could be playing a little bit better. We're starting to get a feel for him. We want to get the attack speed off the queue right off the bat. You don't want to focus on the stealth component. You want to focus on that attack speed uh, steroid it gives you. You want to make sure that uh, you just throw out the W and don't really worry too much about that. You want to wait with your E until you get enough stacks from auto-attacking of your poison. And then E them when you can like basically Callista rend as much poison out as possible. The max is six stacks and it's pretty easy graphically to tell when you're at that point. Are we actually not going to be able to use our draw tool when we're yeah, we're actually not going to be able to use the draw tool. Technical difficulties, guys. Hope you forgive me. Tried to resolve that and actually restarted this uh, lesson, but, you know, if it's just happening again, we're just going to have to deal with uh, no draw tool this time. So there was an invade, and I actually, this is where I'd like to do a draw tool moment, but um, when they have a Blitzcrank, you can't do a standard five-point start of, uh, like, over here, over here, either mid or two people kind of in this region here and then either one person here or two people in the bot lane and one here um, the reason is because blitz will just pull you will sometimes blind Q into brushes and this is the exact reason that Warwick's about to get pinged here because they don't want to get blind queued into the drag the Drake pit here have to burn a free flash for that but at the same time, we do want to make sure that we get a five-point start. So we want to go out, drop wards in forward positions, and retreat to safe positions. Or in cases like this, we can pick a safer spot like right here and still get some good vision. Maybe drop a ward here, and retreat back to this side, and hang out in this area, in this area, and have a ward and try. Doing so can give us good vision coverage of the entrance points to see if they're doing some sort of aggressive play without making ourselves vulnerable by being the standing ward Teemo style. War throws down the ward there to be like, look, there's nothing to worry about. Unfortunately, there absolutely is something to worry about. Here they all come. They wind up focusing on the Nami. 
You get the pull. I'm a little slow to react. Slow to react. Shouldn't run towards them. I actually could have been punished by that. And it could be punished by looking around here too. I want to give us some vision. Um, but this is very dangerous. Very greedy. Probably shouldn't be doing that. Works out this time, but... Uh, seeing that the pole was down, I was thinking I could get away with it, but this goes back to the previous lesson of, like, just because you can get away with it doesn't mean you should do it, so... That's fine. We'll try not to do that in the future. This, again, is greedy, checking. We saw the ward come down here. And that led me to believe they had backed out. So I do actually go for a check on this. Could have just thrown down. Oh, I actually didn't have my ward stall, so I couldn't have warded. Do wind up getting hooked. Very fortunate that more damage didn't go down onto us. Because this allows us to, instead of recalling, just go to our Nami, who's going to heal us up. Nami providing the vision. Then we can go in a little bit more safely here. Now we do have... At least knowledge of for sure they did that, which allows Warwick to go straight to their red. Even though it's warded and they'll know he's doing it. Should be able to get that so he isn't completely three buffed. So that's alright. Now we just play around Blitzcrank for the rest of the laning phase. Make sure we don't get pulled. One last set the minions. Don't want to get pulled into a giant call for help there. And Illusion. So just backing off, letting myself lose that. Lucian actually bees my hero, shoves the minions to me so I don't miss that much. And I'm kind of at a last hitting still. Whoops, whoops, we don't wanna, let's turn that camera off here. Yeah, no, no directed camera, perfect. Okay, so what we do here is we just sort of freeze the lane. Keeping it like this means that he can't use this brush effectively because there's only one way he can hook, so we can just hang over here. That's exactly what we do. Comes out of brush, which is fine. And since he has Relic Shield, he can't help but push it to get his Relic Shield charges off. Unless he wants to not get his Relic Shield charges off, in which case, hey, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, I will make that trade. So... Hang out here, just trying last hit. Always assume he's in the very corner of the brush when I'm here, or when I don't have vision on him here. Nice little concave of the caster minions to give me some shielding from the brush. This starts to get a little dangerous, but I do see him come out. Um, let's actually review that moment where I got pulled there, because I, I do remember this. I was trying to walk in a straight line, assuming he would anticipate a juke. And I think I should probably just juke, to be honest. So he comes out here, say, okay, well, you're not going to be behind these, or you're not going to get me through these minions, so I'm behind here, so I get that last hit. He says, okay, well, I'm just going to run. So I run to create distance, and I'm trying to create as much distance as possible without juking towards Nami, because I think if I go towards Nami, he's going to have more confidence to throw out the hook and get one of us. So by splitting this way, it disincentivizes the hook, but at the same time, I should see that and juke into the minions. So a little unfortunate. But it's alright. Not the end of the world, and thanks to us being level 3, Nami has pretty powerful heals at this point, so she can just get us right back up to full, along with my health pot. So not really punished. Lucian gets a Q off while we're trying to get the wave back under our control here. This should still push in our favor, again, because the Relic Shield stacks are always going to be pushing it. Little risky right there, I have to play very defensive, I have to give up minions, that's alright. I think that's absolutely the, absolutely the right call. Just don't allow for anything crazy to happen. Play nice and safe, again, that's the shoving power. The wave was already stacking anyways, but very close to getting the hook there. But we have so much distance created because of the freeze that didn't happen, so great. Beautiful freeze here just outside of the aggro range of the turret. We do wind up coming into the turret a little bit here. Some damage gets down on the first one, and we get to delay them. So, again, it gives us a decent call for help, or a decent uh, freeze. And we do have the ward there, so we can be a little bit more confident of like how to move around him. 
getting ourselves most of the minions here. We're about 12 CS behind, 15 CS behind Lucian. Not that bad considering we've given up probably more than that, it feels like. Probably less than that actually, but it feels like more. <laughs> And also we just are being a pretty bad last hitter early on in the game with Twitch, so getting a little bit more practice in on the champion will help us with that. Kill working out top, again that's AP Malphite, probably didn't expect the damage. Let's actually review the start of this gank here, because I think I probably could have gone in a little bit quicker. So we see Velikaz rotating down, and Warwick is already here, is that correct? No, that's not correct. Absolutely wrong. Replay? Come on, get it together. Level up! Alright. So here we go. So Warwick's coming down with Velkaz, right? So we see them coming. They're even pinging that they're coming. It's very possible that this uh, this was warded. Um, we're actually going to put that on Fog of War. Um, because we've been seeding control of the lane for so long. At this point... I should maybe Q and get one more auto off to get a last hit. Nami just lands a gorgeous bubble. Beautiful play there by Nami. Winds up getting the knockup onto Blitz as well. Great. Blitz. Not sure if he flashed there. Obviously he didn't from that, but we weren't sure in lane, so... Didn't ping it out. Just finished up, took the kill, rotated to the Drake. Good play. Could have gone in maybe a little bit sooner. I think it was okay to just settle for the bait there. This is something we definitely want to go slow on here. So, I think rotating here is absolutely the right choice. We just killed. We should be able to do this. This is a bit of a tougher Drake, and we do know they have full vision of us right now. So it's a little risky, and I kind of am in the front line air quotes from them. So I think positioning towards the back of the pit might be the right play here. Instead, I start to move up to mid, excuse me, towards mid, because I want to get a ward down. I actually don't have a ward though. So this is just poor positioning by me at the time. And I wind up eating the stun. And that is the perfect way to start the fight for them because they're taking down the AD carry. I also get ignited by Blitz, and I'm down at the start of this fight. We do wind up getting an A return kill. Fortunately, Vel doesn't have enough damage to make that work. Nami, I think just uh, panicked there and started autoing. Do wind up going down. So it winds up being pretty bad for us. A 4 for 1 in the extended trade. They do manage to stay on it and get it even without Lisa in there. Took very low, but well played by them. <laughs> it looks like Nami's just done, but she's actually just having connection issues. Um, so let's get moving forward here in the game. So we definitely could have played that better. I think in that position, we got to put ourselves at the back of the dragon pit. And just play like we're the fragile ADC we are. We don't play fragile, or as if we're fragile. We don't play enough as if we are fragile. And we are. We are probably the glass cannon of the team in most circumstances, so. We definitely need to play like it. That was an example of us not doing it. This lane is a great example of us doing that. We're playing very, very much like we're fragile. But we didn't play that Drake like we were fragile, and we need to start doing that as well. So just farming out, just last hitting. Nothing super crazy going on. We might even speed up a little bit more. I'm going double speed just to make sure we get good positioning with the minions there. Fortunately, the wave pushes out a little bit, but we do have Velkos coming, right? So let's look at this timing again. So I think we probably could have gone in a little bit sooner here. This is good continuing to play defensively. Unfortunately, the wave pushes out, so killing that last minion was actually... A huge mistake, because whether or not this was warded, they would be retreating back like this anyway. And Nami has to hold just to try and catch somebody. She does force a flash off of Blitz, so certainly not the worst. But I think pushing out that last minion was probably the wrong call. 
And then I get hooked. Didn't position to find the minions properly. And I... Let's actually analyze that a bit, right? So I played this poorly in a couple ways. So one, I get hooked by Blitz here. This is okay positioning, but I'm grouping really hard. I think I should kind of be splitting away or splitting down, splitting up or splitting down, just to not be so grouped to guarantee that that pull hit at least somebody, right? So this is a lot of damage and I think, fuck it, let's hit all the buttons before we die. Good call. But I think continuing kiting is probably the right call here. Because any additional damage we might have taken there might have been what killed us. The Ignite definitely finished us, but if we took a single auto from Lucian or a single uh, proc of his calling, and we could have avoided that, we would have lived through there. So that would have been even more in our favor. So, eh... I think we need to play, again, more more like we're the fragile, little squishy glass cannon that we are. We're playing a little bit too... Not defensively. <laughs> Hold on here. This uh, slow down button has a little stick to it sometimes. Alright, we want 2x though. So seeing that they're mid, we just shove, shove, shove. Try and go here to back up. Uh, no, I mean, because we don't have that much significant damage built. Sure, we got it. Well, we actually do have some pretty decent damage built. So maybe going onto the turret here was the right call. Unfortunately, now we can't make it work. And it's a little way to back. And Blitz will see us when he's in this ring. So beautiful bubble by Nami to save us here. And that winds up getting us out of jail free. So I think that was probably, again, a stop playing like we're in ADC. You know, play like we're fragile. Um, it may have been fine to get some damage on that turret for free when there was nobody else there and the wave was crashing. But it was definitely too much afterwards. So beautiful Nami ult from the Fog of War. Let's actually slow her down here. And then she follows up with a bubble. And I'm like, alright, that's great. I'm just going to open up and they actually go into fights, so I'm not trying to kite too hard into them. Just want some damage. I want to get as much free damage as possible. We know Blitz doesn't have a uh, flash, so we can get the kill on him. We're happy with that. Couldn't quite find the kill on Dilution there as well. I think I was playing properly like I was fr uh, fragile. Properly as if I was fragile in that fight, so I'm happy with that one. Maybe a little bit more aggressive play could have worked out, but good bushwhack set up there for the brand trying to answer. Go in here looking for some damage. I want to get onto that uh, Drake when it spawns. But uh, it's not spawning for a little while, so I want to get some extra last hits or extra uh, shots into here on the turret. It was very good, like starting to play defensively, but I hung around too long. I hung around too long. Because if he goes on us like that, we can't return damage if there's no minions there. So he's much more likely to actually go in on us. That's exactly what happened, so. We need to play a little bit more fragilely once again. So I rotate over here to the Drake. I'm looking to try and find a fight, but I also want to get damage onto this turret. Looks like a fight might start to break out, but we have good ward coverage of it. So I opt to get um, some pressure on the lane here. Warwick engages. I'm not aware of that. So I have some waste of time here. Could have gotten here a little bit faster. Mm. Yeah, this is very just uncoordinated from us overall. Do open up with my ult. Have thankfully just barely enough mana for it. Mm, but then I wind up eating the damage from Bran there. So maybe I could have played that a little better. Let's go back. Let's sort of that. So I'm coming in. See if Volkos is caught. Okay, darn. Well, you Wilkers, that's bad. Then Malphite goes in, so I try and make a play. Now the Malphite's here, and Lucian's almost down. Eh, this is uh, okay. Opening up on the ult is fine here. I think letting him go is probably okay and turning onto Lee Sin, because Lee Sin's fairly squishy early in the game. And I could have turned and been with the team that the team could tank for me more. 
And then we could have turned on the brand if an opportunity had been. So I, I think I was trying to 1v1 a little bit too aggressively there into a mage that has burst damage. And I need to play like I'm fragile. Which seems to be the evolving theme of this replay. So we need to play like we're fragile AD. And whether or not I'm used to doing that, it's the right play to do. So I need to get used to that. I'm playing the lane like that. I'm freezing like I'm fragile. But I'm not moving in the fights as if I'm fragile. So we go ahead and get some good damage onto the turret here. And again, I think it was just again playing too far forward. Playing too aggressively, not as much like I'm fragile. I want to get damage onto this turret because it's low, and if we can open up mid, that's really good for us. And we did just lose uh, bottom because they dropped a Rift Herald. Go in here for the fight. So this is a really good ultimate from Nami, which makes me very confident. And just open up with my ult, we're able to just eliminate uh, Lucian right off the bat. Seeing that flash, I decided, okay, let's just make sure we finish off uh, Blitzcrank there. Possible that we could have chased him down if we had gone straight on to the lead, but I think it's okay to just secure the win and walk away. So I'm not too heartbroken about that. This was actually a really good play. Warwick, let me go back just so we can review that. Because again, seeing the setup for this, maybe I should have gone in. Okay, at this point, it's fine. You know, at least since we're not going to make it, not a big deal. Brand, poking in and out of vision. I need to be a little bit more prepared to go in here. Because Warwick's going to look to ult, and I should see that coming. At least once he ults, I need to move. A little slow to react there. Not that bad, actually, upon second look. So, good uh, game knowledge by Velkaz there to just know the exact limits of his ultimate and be able to just unload and catch him on the tip. Good play. Push out bot to create pressure. Then make my way over to mid to try and get this... Uh, is the turret actually already down? Not yet. Not yet. Just trying to make pressure there. Just hanging out. Doing some fancy replay walking. <laughs> Going to stealth so I can take a little bit more aggressive of a path. And we actually find out Trindomir. Uh, I think this was on the... Yeah, we were on award. So uh, the Velkals right here sort of baited this, knowing that I was coming in. And I had a feeling this was warded. I think Velkals did too. So I came in on the stealth, and we immediately open up on him. He ults right away. We just run, 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 run. I even heal to make sure that we're okay. I get the last hit right as he's coming out of Undying Rage. So that was good timing. A little lucky. If I had done that just a little bit sooner, uh, I might have ate another auto attack. And then that might have killed me if I had walked on it. So, again, a little, little risky. I did want to make sure you couldn't just run away after that fight. But, eh, a little risky. I think that, that's okay. I think that I can get away with. More than that is a little much. We're good, so we're able to just knock this down. Malphite ults in, but this is so low I decided to just finish the turret first. And then I can open up with uh, my ultimate anyway. Let's go ahead and slow it down. Beautiful ult by Nami. To not just hit Blitzcrank, but force them all into a line so Velkaz can ult really well and get at least one of them, which is exactly what happens. I still have my ult going on for a little while. So we got some good damage down there. This is again a little too far forward. After everyone left, I should disengage with them. I gotta be the back line, not the hero. <laughs> Again, little, little risky. Probably should've just backed in a safer spot. Can pick up the road buff there and then rotate to the bottom for the farm. That's good. And stay for this wave. It kind of makes my back timing a little poor because there might be a conflict breaking out around the Drake. Luckily, we won it anyway. But that back time was a little poor. I wanted to catch the farm and get the next wave for a little extra gold. Okay, this, I was slow to rotate. I went all the way over here. Instead of pathing through the jungle to get to the team fight quicker, I went all the way to here and then came over. So that's bad. Um, I might have been able to make a difference, but that is Trindomir, so maybe not. We'll never know. I maybe could have at least saved Velkaz if I was there sooner. So that was probably incorrect. Do you have Runon's done already? Yeah, nice. So, 
We offer a little bit of wave clear. Little slow rotate bottom with Nami. So we do this to turret uncontested. Not sure I could have successfully contested that, but there's no reason two people needed to be mid. I should have been bought with Nami. Me and Nami actually wind up pushing up quite far here. Uh, all the action top, and as soon as I see Brand mid, it's like, okay, well, we're just going to shove here. And Nami's getting some nice forward wards down. As soon as they go Mia, we back off. We see Blitz coming. We actually, I think, saw... Yeah, Blitz going back. So I don't know where Brand is, so we just rotate over mid. Get this wave shoving again, catch all the farm. I'm looking to pressure mid, ready to rotate away as soon as I see somebody. Um, seeing the Lucian, I kind of stay a little bit too long. Don't really want to 1v1 him. I think that was better play than I would have done in the past as far as playing like I was fragile. Grab the rest of that Raptor camp, come back mid. Might look to go to a side lane here. Okay, we go back, that's fine. So I don't, again, I don't want to double up on Velkaz already being mid. What do we purchase here? Get ourselves the Tabby. Probably a good pick up this game. There's lots of auto attacks happening. Even Blitz hell auto attacks. Um, go over, pick up Red. Drake's not for a little while. Rotate over to mid. Going three of us here is okay. People looking for Baron, but we saw they just grabbed the Scuttle. We do know they have Vision over here, and I actually look... Whoops, in the wrong button. I look to go in on him in Stealthed to try and make something happen. My W slows a little bit, so if I could have landed that, maybe we could have made that work. Right now we're just looking for a teamfight scene. Trendomir on the flank. Decided to just back away. Play it safe. There's a Drake coming up. And it's an important one. It's an Infernal. Is that correct? Can't quite tell. Here, let me go. All vision. Nah, it doesn't show me. Great. I think it's an Infernal. I think I think this replay client shows you what it is. Um, so where are we? We're over here. So we do, do look to contest here. We get a really good initiation, and I think we saw somebody over there as well. So it lets us know we should be able to win this fight. Trendomir does make it back in time for it, but at this point we've already got their uh, smite down. And let's actually review this at one time speed, because I did play this wrong from what I remember. Because like, I flashed in a suboptimal way at a minimum. So we go in. Great to just run in here. Pop the Q at the start so I get the extra attack speed steroid down. Good job on finishing those two off. Lucian dashes away. I want to get away from Trinomir, but I flash right into the cooling. That's the problem. And then, well, that wouldn't have been the worst if I had then rotated down like this away, because there's a wall right here. Maybe I could have dodged all the cooling and still got damage onto Trindomir to make him ult sooner without tanking as much of the Colleen as I did there. Because of that, I'm having to play a little extra far back. And I actually almost die walking into that. Might not have been that risky if I had played a little bit better with my flash. Good on me for dropping a pink board there. Actually did matter a little bit. And then Velikaz and Brand have a 1v1 while we pick up the Drake. And it is an Infernal, so it doesn't matter. It's good, that's two Infernals and an Air Drake down. down. Cloud Drake, whatever it's called. And they actually 1v1 each other. 1-4-1 one, one each other. A little quick on the E there, for the wave clear. Could have let the poison stack on the casters a little bit more. I don't have Q available for this because I used it to show, but I think that's okay. I think it's alright to do that. Let's go ahead and 2 exit here. Back off because I can get some counter jungle on here. As soon as I see Trinomir, I'm like, no, thank you. Back away. Got myself a little bit more gold. And then head on back to base. We don't have any vision, but I remember my scrying ward was down at the time. I would have gotten us some vision. Nami uses a spooky ghost to kind of scout out that nobody's there, but 
You do need to be a little careful when you do that, but good on Nami for using the spooky ghost to sort of scout. A little bit forward, so this time she doesn't have spooky ghost when she goes to scout. So she actually winds up running into Trindomir here, quite literally. <laughs> and she can't get the bubble on her herself. So then they just go to collapse, and she actually, I mean, that's a good, it seems weird that it's good for her to flash out of the redemption, but she flashed into a straight line that forces them to walk through her ult. Unfortunately, Blitz pulls her, and I went in to try and make the most out of that situation. So I played, I played that wrong, because <laughs> I'm running into three of them. And unfortunately, uh, Malphite lagging the whole time. Good ult there by Velkaz to try and get what we can on the back. Work. Grabbing up Lucian as well. So at the end of the day, it's a two for three. Um, and my, I think again I'm playing, oh never mind, it was a two for four. Um, again I feel like I'm playing a little, a little much like I'm not the fragile, okay, four for three, whatever. Um, not playing as if I'm fragile enough. I kind of went in to be like, all right, well, I'll make the most of this with you, Nami. But as Twitch, I can't really do that. I can't go in and be like, all right, well, I'm here. Ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. Unless I'm, like, insanely fed, which I was not this game. I got myself some good kills, which has accelerated my build a little bit, but it's allowed me to go Mercurials. It's allowed me to get my uh, Ninja Tabby down. Good peeling off the blue buff there, because I don't really need it to try and come to the team. Great. Got my priorities straight. Do wind up knocking down that ward. Great. Fight breaks out here. And I just, before I can even get here, immediately some power. Maybe I should have been here at the start. I think I was doing some okay stuff because I was cleaning out some wards. Seems alright. Let me just go for the Baron here. Velkaz zoning. Good stuff. Use the key just for some attack speed. Do you wind up going in on us? Yeah, I think this is about right. Right here, like, okay, this is far enough range to where I can just open up. And sure, a little bit of damage comes on to me. I almost died, but I do have the Mercurials to get rid of the passive burn. I think that was okay. Let's actually review that, see how I could have played that better. Oh, look at that crit. Look at that big crit. <laughs> okay, so I do play a little forward. After he goes into Nami, because I think, okay, spins down. So I'm probably far enough back. Spin and chicken are down. So this is probably far enough back where I'm safe. I open up with ult to start getting damage onto these two. But then he actually comes back just sooner than I think I anticipated. And I do flash. And I do take that. I QSS the burn. Hmm. Didn't wind up doing anything. Wasn't sure if that ring was around me, but... Probably well, find the QSS just for the sake of QSSing. So let me just go back. Could have maybe played that a little bit better. I think I was playing a little bit more like I was fragile. I think it's starting to click in my head at this point in the game. But okay, you know, I'm an AD. I need to play safe. <laughs> and when I'm wearing Baron too. It's important to play safe, so even more important than normal. So I hang out and just shove out mid because I, I want to keep the Baron active. Malphite's already scouting as best he can. Alright, they already had it, so I just retreat away from where they're coming from. Good play there. Just hang out. I like to rotate top. Because one, there's already a bit of a wave here I can push out, and two, this turret is much easier to siege than this one, so I think that was absolutely the right call. We are going to want to slow this down once we get here though. Get some good poke on him. I actually make him ult at the start of this. So that's great. I say we just take that for free. Wonderful. So after that, we're hanging back a little bit. 
Looking to get some free damage, but don't want to walk into anything. Use the Q for a little attack speed, but then I back away because those minions are low. Don't want to get blitz pulled. But, in the back line, Wolf goes in. So I have to run in right after that. Where are we here? Hold on, let's let's keep a better tabs on ourselves. See, this is a little poor map awareness. When does War go in? He goes in right now. That's actually a pretty good opportunity for him to go in. So right now he's tanking, so I need to be running on in. I think I react fairly quickly to that. It's not so bad. Good Nomule to disrupt a lot of their team. Good Warwick ult to actually land on the Lucian. Then I do ult. I'm getting this on a couple members of the team, it looks like. Because of my Spray and Prey. Or because of my Runons. Synergy with my Spray and Prey. Here's this on most of them. Might have popped the E a little early there. And then I actually use QSS for just being able to run in, and then I stand and don't move. So that was probably poor micro at the end. It started out alright, but I think the reason I moved so far forward was because I started tanking the turret. Yeah, right here it swaps aggro onto me. So I have to walk far enough forward to drop the turret. But I QSS for no reason. If instead of going here, and kind of going up, if I had gone back behind Nami, that would have been much better. And then I could have been standing here the whole time. She would be tanking minions. She would be giving me at least a path to disengage behind. Now if I could have tanked them, it would have worked much better. And then I would have been alive critically to knock down these turrets a lot faster. If I'm alive right now, this is an inhibitor down immediately. Maybe another inhibitor down here. Maybe even end if we're very lucky. Instead, this takes forever. Do you eventually get it? That's all we can do to just get that and then push these minions in to crash the wave. Don't even get the turret here. They're there to answer with wave clear. So I think that was a moment that we could have just basically won the game right there. If we get these two inhibitors down to this point, it's over almost instantly. Um, I'm cleaning up uh, some of the jungle so we can all rotate and group bottom. Be a little efficient with our timers. But I think I could have played that better. I needed to, again, backline. Play like I'm fragile. Sure, I could get up forward to drop the uh, inhibitor or the turret aggro. And this is the moment that we talked about in the setup here. I look and see, like, okay, a fight's definitely breaking out, so I'm just going to leave this wave. And I'm going to go to the fight. Good Zonias, good Redemption. And I'm able to come in and just open up right away. And luckily they lined up almost perfectly for me to get maximum value of Spray and Prey. And same with Velkos. Disgusting AoE there. Do you have to wind up to burn the heal to get away? But definitely worth it. Then we got a huge wave pushing in there. Stick with the plan, go bot. Because I'm already here. Maybe it's possible we could have ended at this point in the game. I think since there wasn't minions, or there was minions there. There wasn't minions particularly further ahead of these ones in mid. So I was thinking maybe it's fine to stay bot and just knock all these inhibs down. It's possible we could have just ended there, because what's Blitz really going to do? But this game is basically over already, right? Like, we can pick when we want to go for these two objectives. We can get them for basically free, because we've got double supers. Should be no problem. I base, pick up some items. I'm going to go times forward through the rest, because this is pretty straightforward. I see Blitz hanging around, it's fine. They don't have vision. It's minus again. So I think I actually stopped auto-attacking at some point here. No, I was incorrect. Did I? Maybe that was another game. I guess we just rush it down, it's a little risky, but... It's fine, then we just rotate over here. Did give them one last chance to get back in the game. So if I had finished the game out a little bit quicker, like we were talking about, 
We wouldn't have had to go to that risk. And this was absolutely free, and Velkaz was even scouting to make sure. Looking to try and pick somebody off. Then we just funnel in, and we finish it out. So, go ahead and slow this down for the final little bit. Just hang out. No reason to be super far forward. We're way back here. Just giving the buff over. Letting the minions do the work. Giving the buff over to the other side. Looking for any chance we can to just push the minions on the turret a little bit. A little bit more. No engagements just yet. Blitz says, wow, we're really going to lose this if we just let them siege like that. So he just goes all in for it. And... Lee Sin actually comes to try and aim and suck us. We flash a little bit. We actually panic run QSS. I'm not sure there was much to QSS. Maybe at least in slow. Then we just finish her out. So, at the end of the day, not that bad. Played that pretty well. But I definitely think the overarching lesson that we kept sort of harking back to was, at least, especially in the early game, and in the mid game, we need to play like we are a squishy ADC here. Come, come to my face, yes. Come to me, come to me. We're AD now. We're playing AD. We're not a badass mid laner who's like, oh, you want to come fight me? I'll 1v1 you, bro. I'll blow you up. <laughs> we don't want to do that. We want to be an AD who has consistent damage over time, right? Def definitely some burst potential. But consistent damage over time and very squishy. So we can't 1v1 anyone. <laughs> we are here to hang out behind our teammates in the back line. Play with our teammates. Make sure we do good rotations like that. Um, that last rotation around uh, the dragon area. But also, we want to make sure that we're playing safe and we're playing back. And when fights are happening, we're playing in the back line. We're not pushing ourselves forward. If we have to go forward because we're dropping like turret aggro like we did um, in the top lane, then we go forward but behind Nami. We go forward and back at the same time. We say, okay, you're over there. If, if this is the lane, right, and they are here, instead of just rotating forward, if Nami's right here, I need to rotate that kind of forward. It'll still be forward to drop the turret aggro, but it will give me a little buffer between them. And I need to play like I'm fragile. I don't necessarily need to play defensively at all times, but I need to play like I'm fragile at all times. And I think that's a key difference. In the lane, playing very defensively. Freezing like that, very defensive. The reason I think that's correct was because we were against a Blitzcrank. So that's good. It's good to play defensive there. But... In the fights, it's less about playing defensively like we're behind and trying to just take sure things and not take risks because we're already so far, we're already starting to lean behind. We only want to capitalize on mistakes. We don't want to take risks ourselves and open us up to mistakes. Doing that's fine for the situation. But we want to play like we're fragile. We want to backline. We want to play um, behind our team. We want to let our team do their job. Their job is to front line for us, give us time, to get that consistent damage out, get a lot of time with that damage being put out so we get more seconds with our DPS. Um, and if we enable our team to do that by playing like we're fragile, they don't have to adapt to us and try and like create, inject themselves into being the front line. They can already just be where they are doing what they're doing, being in their team, fighting them, getting their like maximum chain CC off or whatever, and we can just already be like, hey, whatever you're doing, perfect. That's working as a front line for me too, by the way. Like if we can do that, that is the sign of a good ADC. At least that's one of the signs of a good ADC. And we can get better at that. And I, I feel that. I feel that knowledge. So hopefully next episode we can put that into practice a little bit more. I think we're going to continue to play a lot of Twitch. So we shall see very soon whether or not we can make the most out of that. But I think this is a good lesson. If you know somebody... Uh, who could use a little bit more knowledge on the distinction there between fragile and defensive. Uh, you know, send them this video. If you were that person that could use some additional uh, knowledge on that concept and you struggle with that like me, like you saw me doing today, uh, you know, let me know. Uh, let me know this was helpful to you. I hope it uh, does improve your play. So 
Uh, not only can you see me hopefully improve my play as we climb the ladder, hopefully, uh, but you too can climb along with us and you can uh, catch yourself up to me or if you're looking back, you can still say, hey, you know, those are some good tips. I can incorporate those into my play, um, even looking back from a higher rank. So I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, let me know. And uh, keep on watching the videos. I'll see you guys on the next episode.